For the virtual craft night from the Makery program that we hosted in November 2020, we put together some craft kits to make a Thanksgiving themed door wreath project. For patrons who were able to pick up these kits, the um, kits included pre-cut pieces ready to assemble. For patrons who couldn't pick up the kit or who are just interested in how to make their own design, this tutorial will show you how to create the design in Inkscape. Inkscape is a free program that you can download at inkscape.org. And it's, it's an illustration program kind of similar to Adobe Illustrator. One of the benefits to using Inkscape is that you can create your design and use it with the laser cutter to cut your materials, but you can also use it to cut materials with your Cricut cutting machines or with the Silhouette Cameo cutting machines. If you are using the laser cutter, you do have the option to cut wood up to a quarter inch. For our project, we did chipboard in the uh, craft kits, two millimeter thick chipboard that was 11 by 11 inches. To get started, what we wanna do is adjust our document to match the material we're working with. So we wanna to go to File, Document Properties, and I recommend changing the display units to inches and the custom size units also to inches. And then as I just mentioned, the chipboard we used, it was two millimeter thick and it was 11 by 11 inches. So we're gonna change the width and the height to 11 by 11. You can go ahead and exit out of the menu. You should now see that your document is 11 by 11 inches and you have an inch ruler up at the top. The next thing is to add a circle or ellipse to the document. To do that, we're gonna use the tools on the left side. You should see one that looks like a circle and that's to create your circles, ellipse, and arcs. And you're gonna click and drag to create a circle. You might end up with a circle or an oval that's filled in, or maybe one that isn't filled in. If you need to make any adjustments on the colors, what you wanna do is go to Object, Fill and Stroke. And in my case, I have a infill that I don't need. So I wanna make sure my fill is set to no paint and that you wanna make sure your stroke paint is set to flat color. You should hopefully then end up with some sort of circle or oval with um, an outline. The next thing we need to do is change the size. So to do that, we're gonna make sure that the, the circle or oval is selected. And then up at the top, there should be a width and height option. We're gonna adjust the circle to 10 and a half inches. Our chipboard is 11 inches, but you never wanna cut all the way to the edge. So you always wanna leave yourself some margin. So I'm gonna delete the text in the width text box and replace it with 10.5. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the height. You will notice in my case that my circle is falling off my sheet of paper. So I'm gonna click and drag it to move it onto the sheet. So this is my outer circle. I now need to make an inner circle. To do that, I'm simply just gonna copy and paste to this circle. So I'm gonna to go to edit, copy, and edit, paste. And I'm gonna drag it onto the screen, onto the document. So this circle is also 10 and a half inches. So it's bigger than we need it to be. Our inner circle should be um, smaller. So with the project that we designed, we did a half inch margin all the way around for our door wreath. So if there's a half an inch on the left side and a half an inch on the right side, the inner circle needs to be 9.5 inches. So now that I've adjusted the circle to be 9.5 inches, it is ready to align with our outer circle. To align these together so they're centered, you need to select both circles. My preferred way to do this is to come to the outside of the document and to click and drag. And when you click and drag, you will get a square or rectangle that appears. You wanna drag that rectangle until it covers the entire circles and you wanna let go. Once you let go, you should see that both circles have dotted lines around them. That means they're selected. 
Now that they're selected, we need to align them to be centered. So we're going to go back to object and we're going to choose align and distribute. And in the align and distribute menu that appears, you want to choose create on vertical axis, or sorry, center on vertical axis and center on horizontal axis. And again, my circles are starting to fall off the edge, so I'm just going to click and drag them to move them onto the document again. So there is my wreath frame. Now we're ready to add our text. So on the left side, there's different tools again, and so one of those is the create and edit text objects. We're going to click on it, and then anywhere in our document, you can go ahead and click and a cursor will begin blinking. We can go ahead and type our phrase. For our door wreath, we did give thanks, and we actually did it in two text boxes, so I'm gonna click a second time and type thanks. The purpose for this is so the two text boxes move around freely, so you can place them where you want them to be um, instead of moving them together. You will notice that our text is very small, and it's um, set for a sans, um, a sans font. So we need to adjust this for a script font and we need to make it bigger. So I'm gonna double click on give until the word is selected. And then up at the top, you'll see that it's set for a sans serif font. I'm gonna use the drop down arrow to open the font menu. And I'm gonna scroll until I find a script font that I like. Now for ours, we did script MT bold. You wanna make sure that you're choosing a script font that is bold enough that the letters will um, stay strong. If the script font is too flimsy, if the lines are too thin, your font will break during the cutting process and you will end up with a broken design. I'm gonna double click on the word thanks and also change the font to script MT bold. So now my font has been changed to a script font, but my font size is very, still very small. So what we're gonna do is enlarge the, the words. I recommend starting with the bigger word, in this case, thanks, because it's gonna take up more space. So when you click on it, you will get these arrows where you can click and drag to resize. I'm gonna click and drag. And sometimes you might notice um, that it's not, resizing proportionately, proportionately, it's making it stretch. So what I'm actually gonna do is undo, and you wanna make sure the lock icon up at the top is locked. Once it's locked, you can click and drag and resize it proportionately. So that looks pretty good to me for um, a size. It's filling the door wreath pretty well. So what I'm actually gonna do is double click on the word thanks, and up here, I'm gonna see what font size it ended up being. In our case, it ended up being 271.6 for the font size. I'm just gonna go ahead and round that up to 275. So I'm gonna double click to delete and type 275 and hit enter. The reason I'm doing this is so I can go to the word give, double click on that word, and adjust the font size for 275. And this will make sure that both words are the same font size, so the letters are the same size. Now right now it looks like the letters are all connected, but if we change the color, so again, if we click on the word and then open object, fill stroke to make color adjustments, I'm gonna make sure that the stroke is set to flat color. And then I'm gonna to go to fill and do no paint. And if you look closely here, you'll see that where the letters overlap, there are black lines. Anywhere you see that black line is where the machine is going to cut. So right now as is, all of the letters are individual and that's not what we want. So what we're gonna do is click on the word give 
we're going to go up to path and we're going to do a feature called union. This fuses all of the letters together. You'll see that those black lines aren't there anymore. So I'm going to do the same thing for the word thanks. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to open my fill and stroke option under object. I'm going to get rid of the, the fill by selecting no paint and I'm going to add the flat color for stroke paint. And you'll notice in this case, my stroke paint is actually really thick. If we go to stroke style, I can adjust the width to 0 0.01 inches and that will thin the outline. Again, you'll notice that where the lines overlap, there's black lines that we don't want. That's where the machine's gonna make cuts. So to fix that, we're gonna go to path and union. We're now almost done. The last thing we need to do is place our letter, our words where we want them along the wreath and fuse them to the wreath. So for this project, um, it helps if you're able to connect your words in the most places. So we're actually going to rotate the word give just a little bit and to rotate, after you select the word give once, you're gonna select it, you're gonna click on it again and your arrows should turn into these rotating icons. And we're just gonna rotate just a little bit. And once it's rotated, we're gonna drag it around. And in our case, we wanna make sure that the word give overlaps for the G and the E, and also for the I. You wanna make sure that you don't forget your I, because if it's not connected, it will get um, lost when you go to do the cut. So again, for the word thanks, we're gonna do a similar thing. We want to click once to select the word thanks and a second time to get the rotating icons. We wanna rotate just a little bit to match the word give. And we wanna click and drag this. And for the word thanks, we want it to be attached um, to the circle and also the H and G overlapping. Now it actually looks like I made the word just a little too big. So I'm actually gonna just shrink the size a tiny bit. And that should be good. So it's connected where the T and the S is around the circle. And it's also connected where the G and the H overlap. Now, because the words are overlapping, you'll see that they're gonna get cut into each other, which is not what we want. So to fix that, we need to select our word. I'm gonna start with the word give, and then press and hold shift and select the inner circle. And this time you wanna to go to path and choose difference. Difference will fuse those overlapping lines together. And we wanna do the same thing for the word give and the word thanks. Select both of them, go to path, and choose difference. And now your design is ready to cut. What you wanna do is go to file, save as, and this will open up your file save as window to give your file a name and choose a save as type. Inkscape and SVG can work with the laser cutter and the Cricut cutting machines, but it, especially for the Silhouette Cameo machines and Silhouette Studio, you wanna make sure you're saving it as a .dxf file. Once you've saved it, you can bring it in on a flash drive. You wanna make sure before you come to the Makery that you give us a call or email us to reserve your Makery reservation. And that is how you prepare a door wreath design.